Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another installment of the Breen Machine video blog. I'm here with the nicest guy in automation right now, Thad McCoy, and we're going to be talking about how to utilize your resources at suppliers and manufacturers to get the job done quickly. Let's get to it. So, Thad, I want to give you a brief uh, intro here. We've been working together for six, seven years now, I think. Um, done a good number of projects. Um, I want to shout out for my audience here. I have, you know, I, I started in automation 10 years ago or so, and when I was first starting, I didn't know who to go to with questions. I didn't know who the right people were to talk to. And, um, you know, everybody's got questions. I've, I've still got questions now on applications every single time. It doesn't matter how long you've been in it. Absolutely true. So the big thing I want to get at here is how does this system of support work? Yeah. The industrial automation system has a lot of support built into it. And you're a big part of that. Uh, you've been a huge help in a bunch of projects. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, can you describe that system for us? Sure. Uh, one concept is Bras Company. We are a pretty heavy engineering-based distributor. So what I mean by that is we have a very large percentage of application engineers to salespeople. So with respect to that, now myself, I've been in the industry for just over 20 years now, and I've been doing automation through nearly all of that. Uh, so I've had a chance to work through what I would call some of the uh, uh, more challenging times and it's things have certainly gotten easier as time has progressed uh, but like john said i also run into a lot of the same uh, challenges and needing uh, the same kind of uh, support as well doesn't matter how long you've been doing this you're still going to run into those questions so if i don't happen to know the question to something what i'll do is typically call uh, the manufacturer and what's nice about a lot of the manufacturers that we work with is they have expertise in very specific product sets so I'll call the individuals that have that expertise. Now, that infrastructure doesn't stop there. What's nice is once you're in the manufacturer, they now have resources behind them as well. So if they don't know the answer to something, now all of a sudden this can go nationally or internationally. So it really does help that uh, a lot of these manufacturers are global in nature and have the infrastructure to be able to help that way. Now, in addition to this, what we're also finding is that we do have a number of customers when they do sell their machines, they are going international. So this kind of falls into a realm that now kind of exceeds our, you know, domesticated territories where we now need to rely on those global infrastructures of our manufacturers. So that does come into play um, as well. That's a great overview. So uh, in summary, we have local resources at the supplier, then we have higher resources at the supplier, then we have the manufacturer local, the manufacturer uh, national, international, etc. And I've certainly been through that chain myself and uh, people like Thad are often very good at uh, walking you through the chain as necessary. Um, Thad, I know you've seen a lot of the common things. You can often just have that quick answer right off the top of your head. Um, and I don't have to sit there and wait on hold or try to guess what the right resource is or do I type one or two <laughs> on this stupid phone prompt. So um, I would certainly encourage people to reach out to the local people first to get a much more personalized experience and faster, more efficient. Um, and what else help, helps with this too is when you are asking someone like myself those questions, if it's questions I haven't been asked before, it's a learning experience for me too. So it's it's things I do encourage people to call, regardless of what the question is. I need to learn just as much as everybody else does. So it's, it's very much uh, beneficial to everyone. Fair point. So when people uh, are having an issue, mm -hmm. when is the right time to call you versus call the sales rep or the manufacturer? So what I like to say is anytime that you're dealing with something that is I have a part number, I need to know how quickly I can get this, what is the price I need for this. Uh, that is a, typically what you're going to be looking at to, uh, for a, a sales-based or an inside sales-based person. Um, 
can you get this turned around to me quickly? Um, if you're getting into situations where now I have a kind of an infrastructure kind of base question or I have networking or I have just something very specific that's technical, uh, it's into those uh, situations that I would say that uh, I would be a, a particularly good person to call. Absolutely. And what information is it good for somebody to have when they're coming to you with a question? What helps you help them? So one of the biggest challenges I find is that you don't know what you don't know. So what I like to typically lead with is there's a lot of pre-existing information that's already available out there. It's just a matter of getting it into that person's hands. So having done this for so long, I obviously know where to look very quickly to find these things and how to make people made aware of them very quickly. Uh, so that's a lot of the, the first step that I like to take is, you know, I like to let, uh, kind of help train people to feed themselves, right? To, to become self-sufficient. Um, I don't like to just kind of take the reins and just drive for them. I want to make sure somebody feels like they've actually learned and grown through the process and, and become self-sufficient and happy in doing so. I, I salute you for that, <laughs> sir. And um, something I often talk about in my blog posts and things is this concept of a brain outside your brain. Okay. Because people can't know everything. This is very And, you know, we all do this all the time anyway. We just, maybe this isn't a common term for it, but when uh, I'm trying to remember a part number, I don't sit there and study the part number and try and remember it. I write it down. Exactly. When I'm trying to remember a phone number, I don't sit there and try and remember it. I pull out my phone and it's in there. Exactly. You know, these, these are brains outside of my brain. Quick yeah. access, organized Absolutely. information. And when it comes to conceptual application, um, anything that requires more thinking than my phone can figure out, you are my brain outside my brain. And I'm You're... happy to be that. <laughs> like I say, I've been doing this a long time, so I have a lot of familiarity with the, uh, with the elements that go into these, uh, these particular uh, devices, these systems, uh, kind of the things to look out for, but also, quite honestly, the things to really take advantage of. Uh, so that's the stuff that I really hope to try and bring to the table. Awesome. And you do a great job. Thank you. Um, I know we're talking a lot about Omron today. Sure. If we were to zoom in on Omron for a moment, what are the five top questions that you get about Omron products? So quite honestly, the most common thing I would say I would run into is who is Omron and what do they really do? Um, Omron has historically been known more as just a sensor-based company, or they might be known more for their healthcare element. Um, people don't typically see them uh, in their, I guess, larger automation uh, capacity. Um, you know, it's uh, they don't have the presence here that they do in Asia, as you would expect. Um, but we are certainly working to uh, to change that with the technologies that come out with here recently. So I would say it's a lot of awareness is the first thing is just how do you make people aware of what Omron can do and the infrastructure that they have to be able to support everything that they can offer. Uh, so that's a lot of what I would say is the, the first thing. Uh, and then it gets into a lot of the generalization questions as to how does the technology work? Um, why would I do this versus what I've been used to doing uh, this other route? Um, it's just a lot of uh, kind of taking a step back from, I guess, what uh, people have uh, done for a number of years and looking at, um, quite honestly, perhaps a different way. Um, in a lot of respects, it may be a better way, um, but it's just a, it's just having the, the confidence to want to take a look at it in a different way. I think I may be unique in industry in that I'm constantly wanting to try new things. Yeah. A lot of people are very uh, risk averse, and I mean, th th it certainly makes sense to has have some risk aversion in industry. So I don't fault people for that, and I I have learned some of that risk aversion myself. So, um, but I I would definitely say you know here we're engineers here, right? Yes. Um, we have this big toolbox full of application tools, yes. and sometimes that's uh, you know our last print set because now we can throw that at the next thing and change a couple things and it's right. done. That's a good right. tool. Right. Sometimes it's a PLC from this manufacturer, that manufacturer, and they all have their pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses, Most definitely. and some things just fit better some places than other things. Um, of course, there's the other side of that where often a company will prefer to invest in the software and tools and knowledge to support one brand. And I think that ends up making the choice for people quite often. Right. So speaking of different tools in the toolbox, um, I think 
we all view these tools as toys as well. And that's that's true at home and it's true in industry when I buy a new chainsaw or lawnmower, it's like, oh, you know? Exactly. Um, and so I definitely like to look at uh, PLCs and HMIs that same way. What are your favorite toys? So everything that I like to, to kind of get my arms around, things that are new, in fact, I'm kind of notorious for uh, asking the manufacturers quite often on what is coming down the pipeline, what does that do for me, what is what is kind of fun and exciting. Um, it's it's kind of these new little buzz things, right? These new little toy elements. So, you know, I, I'd like to use the same concept there that uh, these, these are kind of more uh, grown-up based toys. Uh, so it's not your Legos, I guess, anymore. It's, uh, it's kind of the automation based toys that we now kind of get ourselves exposed to and it's just getting a chance to uh, uh, kind of try and stay on top of what's new and fun and exciting. That's a really good example. It's not even, um, it's not even toys like a four-wheeler is a toy. Right. It's toys like Lego blocks or uh, or Lincoln logs. It's a bunch of little pieces that you can buy and put them together and make something real Absolutely. and bigger yep. out of them. I, I like that analogy. That's that's great. Um, something that I have found often uh, it's very important to know about where to find information. We certainly talked about you, and I know often you're good at connecting me with the printed information when I'm having trouble sure. finding it. Um, I would I would say two most important things uh, documentation-wise is the user manual and the install manual. Oh, I'm gonna say three. Selection guide. Yep. <laughs> um, how, how would you recommend people find manuals for Omron or in general? So based off of what the technology is, I would say it's uh, like the selection manual or a data sheet is uh, Omron would term it. Um, I would start there typically for most things. Uh, that's an easy way to identify some of the specifications for each of the different products. And then I would uh, look into uh, the manuals or certainly the way to, to look into the Bible. This is if you are really needing a good uh, bedtime story um, and looking to go to bed. <laughs> uh, the last option is uh, quite honestly, quick start guides. Uh, the quick start guides are a very, very good place to get started on. They've already done the work for us. Let's just use what they've already done and make things easy for ourselves as well. The, the Cliff Notes version of the manual. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> Here's the so, important stuff just to get something rolling. But as far as how to find these things, um, you know, when dealing with someone like an Omron, they have a, an America's website, they have a European website, they have a global website. Where do I go to find this information? Ironically, you're going to find that each one of these locations actually has some very useful information available, and I try to take advantage of each of those where it's necessary. Um, for someone that's new to it, I don't expect anyone to kind of just grasp that instantly, so that's, that's again, a, another instance where time has kind of helped me to, to become that resource to help that, that process. So once again, it would be, uh, hey, talk to Thad, and sure. Dad will teach you how to fish, not just throw a document exactly, at you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so here's the most important question of the day. If you had a theme song, what would it be? Wow. Put me on the spot here. That's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we want to go and uh, kind of look at the uh, wall over here, perhaps, but it's uh, probably going to have to be uh, some kind of movie-based uh, genre. <laughs> so... Uh, very big into the sci-fi world, and uh, it'd probably be something relating to uh, Star Wars or Star Trek, or as my family likes to say, anything with star in it. <laughs> <laughs> star X. Yes. <laughs> very good. So, they got some good soundtracks. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And um, I want to give you the opportunity, if, if people are looking to find you or Brass, how would they get a hold of you? Good question. Uh, so Bras is actually located in uh, many different states. Uh, our headquarters is in Eden Prairie. Uh, Bras Company is also a division of Motion Industries. Uh, so we are a very large company now, and as a result, we're kind of located in uh, the larger Midwest, on the Northeast, uh, down in the Southwest uh, of uh, California, as well as Florida. So uh, best place to try and find information on me being in Wisconsin would be going to probably the Brass Company uh, website and just calling them the main uh, phone number and asking for assistance in Wisconsin. Ironically, I do get quite a few phone calls uh, for 
help uh, from people that have never called uh, Bross in any capacity um, just to try and get some assistance. So it's a very common thing for people to get hold of me. So you're just that kind of celebrity. And, and I don't mind helping people. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. This has been a great way to uh, stay productive while we're bunkered in the basement, staying away from COVID-19. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's uh, been great talking to you. And I, I, I think our audience is going to find it very useful. I wish I had this video when I first started. Thank you as well, so. John. I appreciate it. And thank you all as well. And like I say to everyone that calls me, if you need help, please do call. Please do. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If there's one thing I like more than making these videos, it's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.